someone driving through KwaZulu-Natal can't have failed to notice the incredible progress of the N3 upgrades, today, Sanwell TV is in the eastern region at Naidu Consulting, a 25-year-old civil engineering company. When you build a wider road, you need to build bigger bridges. That's something that requires a whole different level of expertise. We investigated how bridges are assessed and maintained with Karusha Aya. Now, let's start at the beginning. How did you begin your journey into becoming an engineer? Growing up, I've always loved maths and science, so I've always wanted to do something in my career with incorporating maths and science. Um, civil engineering, I feel, also incorporates something else that I like, which is community development. Um, it's a career that directly contributes to developing the community and the infrastructure around us and makes our lives easier. So that, that's how I chose Civil. Quite recently, we've seen that KZN has, of course, been, you know, subject to many floods. And I'm pretty sure that it's impacted a lot of the structures that you work on. Can you unpack some of those for us? We are experiencing more extreme weather events um, these days. And a, a project that we did recently that was flood damage repair was the Mflali River Bridge project. Um, this is a Sanral project that won the SICE Technical Excellence Award and accommodation at the CESA Awards. Um, so what happened was the flood of flood levels got really high at the bridge and there was a debris blockage um, at the bridge, uh, caused the bridge to overtop and uh, become buoyant. So there was trapped air underneath the bridge that caused the deck to actually lift off its bearings and shift downstream. Um, so that was that impacted Sanrel quite a bit because it it meant that that bridge couldn't be used. So traffic had to be diverted onto the other carriageway. So that had major impact on on Sanrel. And um, we NIDA Consulting were appointed to do the emergency repairs. So um, I think projects like that make you think about how how you, weather is going to impact us in future and how we can design for more resilient infrastructure. Um, and Brazilian bridges, yeah. So what would you say were some of the engineering skills that you had to use in terms of that specific project? Uh, definitely problem solving. So problem solving is a big aspect of, of our jobs, which is like also the fun aspect. Um, so you had to think about how do you lift this big concrete deck and get it back um, on onto its bearings because demolishing and building a new bridge wasn't feasible um, due to many, many factors. Um, so you had to come up with a solution to like now shift this bridge back into position and um, also you got to think about now there's a river so how are you going to get your stuff equipment down mm. there, um, where, where would you support the equipment so if you're lifting a heavy deck you need like a good foundation to like um, to jack off so we had to think about all these um, factors and there was also space constraints on the bridge so um, you couldn't get your equipment underneath the, the deck. So it's all these factors that come into play that you have to think about um, that involves problem solving. So that was that was very interesting. Yeah. Yes, so Ntobling, I think I'll start from the beginning. Um, and I want you to just paint the picture in your head. Okay. Can you imagine like all of that covered in water? Wow. Um, so that that's the stream that runs during the dry seasons. Okay. But when we have high rainfall, um, the river level can go up um, right almost reaching the soffit of the bridge. Wow. Um, but on the night of the flood, it was high above the parapets. <gasps> um, so all of this would have been covered in water. The water level would have been right up here. Um, so that's how high it was. And all this vegetation was just flattened and um, a lot of vegetation upstream. You can see it's, it's very dense vegetation um, upstream. Um, it washed up and what happened was that usually there's there's a, a hydraulic opening and when that gets blocked with debris the water level rises because it's like displaced um, so yeah on the on the night of the flood um, the water level was high up above the parapet and um, what happened was because of the shape of the deck um, the water level rose and there was trapped air in between those precast beams and underneath the decks of it. I can understand why this was an emergency project because it seems like there was a lot of pressure. What was the time frame in which you managed as engineers to actually complete the project? 
So we managed to get the bridge open within six months and um, we had the Sanrail and the Minister of Transport come and open the bridge when it was done. So it was finished on time and within budget. What are some of the other environmental factors that actually have an impact on the business of engineering? Yes, so the Amshali River Bridge did have um, quite, it did quite a bit of environmental damage because the, there was a lot of debris washed up and it was clogging the waterway. Um, so the, the environmental factors that we um, consider when, when, when we, in the design stage of the project is, um, so we don't just reinstate what was there, we in, sort of leave the area um, in, in better condition than what it was. So we do like landscaping and planting of plants, gabion work to protect our embankments. Um, unfortunately, there was a lot of alien vegetation and on, along the riverbed that caused a lot of debris to like wash up all along the riverbed. Um, Central allowed us to clear up that riverbed with, with the um, permission of the DFFE. Um, so that incorporated actually like this, it had a social um, benefit as well, social benefit. Um, so we employed almost 200 um, of local community members to um, come and collect all that debris that washed up um, on site and that alien vegetation uh, plant that washed up and clogged up the waterway. Um, so it, it, yeah, that, that's, that's some of the environmental stuff that we consider. We also have, Sentinel has a very structured environmental management plan that you have to adhere to. Um, so we as engineers and the contractor to ensure that all of those environmental laws and requirements were being followed. Um, and we get audited every month by the in, in, an environmental rep. And I don't remember us scoring any less than a 90 something for wow. Charlie. So the yeah, environmental, um, the environmental component is a very important part of what we do, especially like, as you said, like seeing more and more flood flood events and yeah. Can you give us maybe another example of where you've actually seen the socioeconomic benefit of some of the engineering projects that you've worked on? Yeah, so, so on the project uh, before the community members came on site, they had to go through a medical um, to make sure that they were fit to um, do have like intense uh, labor intensive work. Um, so uh, accompanied with that, uh, they had to undergo training. Um, so basic, basic construction skills as well as um, protecting like the plants that are indigenous to the area and that are protected species because along that river bank, we also had a protected species of plant growing on there. So they were trained in terms of like what to leave and what, what was alien vegetation that had to be removed. Um, so yeah, that, that was the social, and it, like, the job creation. Yes. That, that, that would be an important factor. Unfortunately, it was an emergency project, so it wasn't um, a long duration. It provided um, all those community members with the job and upskilling so they could use that skill perhaps to apply for um, an, another position on another site that, that comes up. Nice. That sounds also exciting and I think any young engineer would aspire to be working on projects like this. What would you say to any engineer that's watching and would long to be in your position and working on some of the projects that you do? Oh, it is really um, inspiring, especially when when you consider like how our environment and climate change is impacting things these days. So it's not just um, the, the regular things that we've been doing, but we have to be innovative about how we do things. So it's an exciting time to get in into the field, but you are gonna have like good ideas and, and really think about how we can build more resilient infrastructure. Um, a clients like Sandral give us the opportunity to incorporate um, resilience in, in, into our project. Um, an example would be like on the Amklali River Bridge, it wasn't just reinstating the deck, but Sandra also allowed us to incorporate um, little uh, retrofitting on the bridge that would assist in, in, in the next flood. So mm. become more resilient to floods. So I think, yeah, young engineers, especially if you're creative and you like problem solving and um, addressing all the issues that are coming up with climate change, um, it, is, it is an interesting thing. It's lots of hard work, um, yeah. We looked further into how technology is used to safeguard our bridges and spoke to Tobegile Ngobo. 
Now, let's start with your journey. How did you come about starting your career as an engineer? Well, from a young age, I've always had a passion for building things out of nothing. So I remember just as a little girl, I would build stuff with my grandfather in the backyard. So it was from there where I was like, I need to be able to build things and build things for people. Uh, so that's how it started, yes. Nice. So I'm guessing then you found your passion in maths and science when it came to school? Definitely. I did enjoy maths and science, but more so on just using any material to build something and make something of it. That's where my passion lies. Nice. Now, speaking of, you know, building things, let's talk about your bridge management systems. How exactly does that work? So a bridge management system uh, is used by a bridge owner, such as Sunroll, to be able to have uh, to oversee that asset and manage that asset. The process itself uh, involves creating an inventory of all of those assets such as bridges and culverts um, and then thereafter going out and actually doing those inspections on that asset. Um, software, generally software is used to capture this data um, and you can have a, generally an overview of what maintenance that is needed for example um, Sunroll is able to then go and do crack um, control to go and fix the cracks, for example, in a bridge. Um, so yeah, so this is like generally basically an overview of what a bridge management system is um, in accordance with TMH22 and TMH19. So if I'm following you correctly, your assets are your bridges, right? And normally, how long over a period do you continue with the maintenance? So we design our bridges for a 100 year service, uh, but generally Sunroll would have something called uh, routine maintenance where they come in every five years to maintain that asset itself. So the bridge management system sort of tells you this specific asset needs this specific um, maintenance. Okay, so I can imagine that in order for you to actually start the maintenance of a bridge, you first need to have determined what load the bridge can take. Can you maybe give us an overview of how exactly do you go about calculating um, these sorts of systems? So our design loading on bridges is using actual measurements. Um, it's calibrated using actual measurements from the traffic that we experience on our roads uh, today. Uh, we in South Africa utilize the TMH7 bridge design code, uh, which was developed in the 1970s and the 1980s. However, with that being said, things are changing and we are seeing that there are more heavy vehicles on our roads and the loads are actually increasing. So definitely there is a need to update that loading code and definitely there is um, there are research projects rather out there that are looking into this so that we can adapt to what's happening in our world today. NIDU Consulting seems to be very much up to date when it comes to the latest technology. Talk to me about some of the innovative tools that you're currently using when it comes to your bridge management software. So we call it LINK. Link management system is what we have here at NIDA Consulting. So link management system is basically a pool of software solutions, very innovative, where it uses it built on cloud-based management databases and we access it through um, mobile interfaces. And the key difference is between what we have here and in industry is that it is completely paperless. This then means that it eliminates that potential error of transferring data on site using paper and then onto a PC. So with the link uh, management system, uh, you're able to capture, inspectors are able to capture that data on a tablet and then it immediately syncs into a onto a server rather um, when internet connectivity is restored. So this is the Sanya Road Bridge located on the N2. It is a Sunral uh, bridge. The accident happened here where the two trucks collided, causing massive fire and massive damage to the underside of the bridge. This is the soffit where most of the fire occurred, causing some spalling, some cracking, which had to be repaired. This is a 3D replica of the bridge. As you can see, it looks exactly like what we can see uh, live. Um, this 3D replica is showing some joint failure, the minor cracking as well uh, on the Sonia Road bridge that had to be repaired. This is the actual image 
when we were on site, and you can actually see here the amount of spalling that occurred due to the fire damage. It took us six months to complete this project, and one of the challenges that we faced was that we were working over the N2, so we created a suspended uh, platform uh, so that we could repair the bridge and not disrupt the traffic. So talk to us about CPG. What exactly is it? So in Tabeleng, CPG stands for Contract Participation Goal. So the contract participation goal in all of the Sanral projects, Sanral has a transformation policy. So we have to sort of be in line with that transformation policy where they say a specific percentage needs to go towards uplifting the community. It needs to go towards making sure that the smaller businesses can actually learn from a specific project in that area.